What is going on ladies and gentlemen, long time no see, Horcrux here, welcome to the channel. So we have a banger of a video for you guys today, I'm going to be showcasing you my anti-meta Magic Dragonite PvP build for the Fire Song DLC. So without further ado fellas, let's hop right into it. Welcome back guys and before we hop into the bread and butter of this video a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members who keep this channel afloat the support you guys provide is absolutely amazing i love each and every single one of you if you want to help support the channel more of that uh, at the end of the video so let's hop into the build guys i'm not gonna waste any more of your times with a shameless plug so let's hop into the stat sheet shall we stat sheet stat stat sheets shall we we'll try saying that five times fast well let's hop into the character sheet shall we <laughs> now um there's a few things to note here uh, you know 29k maximum health that's kind of what i want to recommend if you're starting out with dragon Knight. anywhere between 29 and 30k health is perfectly fine your recoveries may notice are really really low yes this is a magic of dragon knight despite what the character sheet says with more stamina recovery and we're running amalgamation of cost reductions and we have a metric crap load of ultimate regeneration and we're going to be using our battle war passive to transfer all that into our resource management so i'll explain more about that as the video progresses um, we are a Khajiit. Yes, we are a Khajiit this patch. The reason we are a Khajiit is because of one of the paths that you do more crit damage. Now, you may be asking yourself, Horcrux, the DK has zero crit passes. Why are you running it on a Dragonite? Well, we are going to go over that in this video, and it is one of the most absurd, nutty combinations I've ever ran on the Dragonite, and I don't think I'm ever going to go back to any other build ever. So, Khajiit race, is it a must? Um, it's definitely going to help. Is it a must? Nah, eh, not so much. If you want to go with something more hybridized, maybe go with Dark Elves or something like that, but I found that Khajiit is the best race for this build. Now, as you would have guessed, we're running the Shadow Mundus to give us additional crit damage and more healing. We're running Vampire Stage 3. This is, I think, the first build on my Dragonite that I've ever suggested to run Vampire. Now, you do not have to run Vampire on this build, okay? Um, it depends on your back bar set. What you want to use, I will go over some variations of what you can run. But Vampire Stage 3, there wasn't any nerfs to it. Like, I, I predicted that they was going to nerf these passives a little bit. But the Undeath passive giving you 30% damage mitigation is just too strong this patch. And yes, it does hurt your sustain a little bit. Especially since we're not a Breton, it does hurt our sustain a lot. But we are able to compensate that throughout the build, which I will explain here momentarily. Another thing to note is you go to the advanced stats and take a look at our critical damage. We're actually at 63% increased critical damage. Now, why is that relevant? It's going to be relevant here very shortly after I show you one of the sets we're running, which is going to be mechanical acuity. Now, if you guys are unfamiliar with what mechanical acuity does, it gives you stamina, it gives you magic, it gives you weapon and spell damage. The five piece, I'm going to give you the TLDR of this. 
essentially when this prox is on 25 second cooldown okay if you do not get a crit on your front bar because we're only running this on the front bar if you do not get a crit that would be dots live attacking direct attacks does not matter okay you get a stack that increases your crit chance by 20 percent okay now upon getting or not getting another crit you get another stack of this okay this only lasts for four seconds though it goes through stages so you have four seconds you don't get a crit okay well you get another stack of 20 percent critical chance all right during that four seconds if you do not get a crit okay well you get another stack of critical chance this progresses all the way until you get up to 100 percent crit chance upon reaching 100 percent crit chance you have four seconds or your burst that every single attack that you do is going to crit now after that four seconds rolls off that's when the 25 second cooldown starts and you have to wait you know yada yada for your proc set to proc again why is this powerful well it's very powerful on the drag knight because imagine all of your attacks critting okay every single attack that you do critting you pop corrosive which we'll go over you're ignoring the resistances physical and phys physical and spell penetration and you're also a tanky mofo and you have four seconds for your burst that to me is the formula for Cyrodiil you kite do your thing your 1vxing 2vxing you know whatever small group this is the ultimate turn burn dragon knight pvp build it really is it does literally everything that you could possibly ask for so we're going to go over the rest of the build here but i'm just want to show you guys that you can run acuity on pretty much any class and it's going to be very very viable this patch especially on the dragon knight now we are running axes because axes actually increase your critical damage which coincides with the build very nicely on your main hand you'll want nern hone and then on your off hand you can either run sharpen or charge i always go with charge because when you get the burning status effect you proc your combustion passive which gives you back resources which is really really nice now there is an alternative you can run if you really really want to go all in on your crit damage and i uh I went all in on it is gourmands i had gourmands with me um i'm actually gonna cut away and go grab it okay we're back so now this is gourmands um i spent way too much gold for this set and there is an alternative for this set which is actually probably better than what i recommend but just for shits and giggles guys this new patch new sets i tried out gourmands one of the clips at the beginning was using gourmands i think it's the very first one um, so what this set does, uh, it gives you crit, crit, weapon, spell damage, and then the five piece. Uh, Why you have a food buff active since we are running Bewitched Sugar Skulls, which I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video. And you will do 13% increase uh, critical damage and healing. That seems pretty good, right? Well, there's also another set if you do not want to run this because quite frankly, guys, this is very, very expensive to get. And uh, me being an absolute masochist, I golded everything out. Not only did I gold out the weapons, uh, you best bet I golded out all of the armor as well and drew axe right now is thirty thousand gold a pop and uh this just to let you know guys i was dedicated to this build and trying to make it work okay but come to find out that acuity is is just better overall okay while gourmands does give you a bit more damage when you crit um when you're rocking this you do only have 37 percent crit chance so um i don't think that's enough um, I've tried it. You can run it. That's perfectly fine. But uh, there's an alternative if you want to run this route and rely on leap as opposed to corrosive for your burst and use Balrogs or something like that to get really high crit leaps into whips. Um, you can run Order's Wrath. It's craftable. Um, the good thing about Order's Wrath is you can make a medium, therefore bolstering your damage even more. The downside to Gourmands is that it's light, so you actually do not get increased damage to your critical hits. But it does give you physical and spell penetration, which is kind of null and void because um, for the most part, we'll be rocking corrosive on this build for our burst anyway. So all that's kind of wasted. And yeah, I think Order's Wrath would be a better alternative. It pretty much does the exact same thing. I should have it uh, up on the screen somewhere up there. Uh, it does 5% less critical damage and uh, healing, but it does give you a line of spell crit as well. And also it's craftable. So you don't have to spend an arm and a leg trying to put a build together all right so back bar again uh, we are running rallying cry defending weapon damage enchantment on this the front bar weapon enchantments is poison and shock okay our monster sets are going to be blood spawn blood spawn is amazing it tanks you up it's going to give you insane ultimate regeneration which you're desperately going to need on this build because you're going to be using battle war passive to get most of your resources back 
So we have a one piece training. This is Galant's chain. This is a special named item. It actually comes in heavy reinforced, which is ideal for any build really. And then on all of your pieces, other than that, you'll want well fitted. I don't have the transmute stones for my medium blood spawn mass to make it well fitted, but sturdy is not too bad of a trait as well. Um, things to note, I always rock uh, tri stats on my big pieces. Okay, and we're also rocking uh, one light, five medium, one heavy to maximize our Dawn and passes as well as our critical damage output. The mythic item we are running is Sea Serpent Squirrel. This is amazing because it gives you major berserk and it also gives you major courage, which is going to bolster your healing as well. This is overall about 15% increased damage on your build, which is absolutely nutty in my opinion. And you do have access to a gap closer, you know, i.e. a leap. So the snare is actually really not that bad. And also, if you're kiting or whatever, and you don't want to be snared by Serpent Tribute, you know, which is the debuff this puts on you, if you don't allow yourself to get to 100% health, you know, you just kind of float around your uncomfortable, non-burstable health range, um, you actually won't snare yourself. So what I try to do is I don't overheal too much, and you never get snared, so you really don't have any... Um, downside to this mythic when you're kiting. Now when you're ready for your burst, however, heal up the fool, you take any damage. Now Serpent's Rebuke is going to proc and now you can go in for your burst. You know, just, just a little uh, tip for you guys because this is probably the most broken mythic uh, this patch. So uh, of course we're using, you have to right now. Because right now is a tank meta, solo play is, is worse as it's ever been. They nerfed a cold overload. There, there's gonna be a whole video on this, a whole rant video. I'm, I'll, I'll get to that sometime this week. And then for our rings, we're running Rallying Cry. You do want two infused cost reductions. You're going to have to have it because we are running five medium. Okay, so one infused cost reduction kind of cancels out uh, the medium side of it. And then the other infused cost reduction cancels out the cost increase from being vampire. Now, if you are struggling with sustain even further, just go ahead and slap on a third cost reduction and your abilities will be cheap as fuck and your battle war passive is actually going to regenerate more resources than you consume. So you basically have infinite sustain unless you're sitting on your back bar spamming coagno every other ability, right? Uh, you may say, Horcrux, well, that's a lot of damage you're missing out of. Eh, not really. This is only like 3% overall damage, which when it comes down to do i want infinite sustain or three percent more damage i'm gonna go infinite sustain so let's hop into the skills i'm going to go over the skill bar setup that i have currently and there's also another skill bar setup if you do not prefer molten whip okay so we're running engulfing flames this is mostly just a little bit of dot pressure and it also increases our damage by six percent of all of our flame damage abilities it says current value four percent but fully buff this does go up to six percent very comfortably Running Shattering Rocks because this gives you an undodgeable, unbreakable CC and it also heals you when it ends. And also, also when you cast an Earthen Heart ability due to our Helping Hands passive, you actually get stamina back for using this. So it's actually pretty nice. And then our spammable, yes, spammable is Flames of Oblivion. It's super cheap. It hits three targets. It has a really high chance of applying the burning stats effect. It gives you critical on your front bar. And also during our corrosive, this counts as a direct damage ability. So this go pierces, you know, physical and spell penetration. So this actually hits like a truck, guys. It really does. Molten Whip, again, um, this is not your spammable. This is going to be your execute. You know, you see someone around 50% health, fossilize and whip them, they should be done. Um, this is uh, pretty much our bread and butter. Um, now there's going to be an alternative setup before I get into our flex spot here. Now, if you do not like Molten Whip, because this has been nerfed very heavily, like very, very heavily, um, you can do the trifecta here. Since we're not worried about crit chance, because mechanical acuity is going to give us 100% crit chance, you can drop Flames of Oblivion, okay? And you can put on Talons. You're going to change your Shattering Rocks morph to Fossilize, and then instead of Molten Whip, you're going to run Power Lash. The reason you'll want to do it this way is because Fossilize is going to proc off balance on whoever you stun with it, okay? Because they have the off balance status effect, that means you're going to be able to Power Lash, which is going to heal you and do increased damage. Now, Talons also immobilizes someone, and when you attack an immobilized enemy, it also sets them off balance. So Talons and both Fossilize can proc Power Lash. Now, there is a little trick once you guys really get good with the Dragonite um, to have the off-balance status effect never be consumed and you can have constant Power Lashes on your opponent. Now, this is going to be hard for me to demonstrate on this dummy, but essentially you want to challenge your opponent and right when you think they're about to roll dodge, if you Fossilize them and get a lie attack off, they permanently have 
the off balance status effect on them and you can just keep on power lashing for like three to five seconds i forget how long it lasts i think it's like four four and a half something seconds like that so if you time it correctly in the middle of the roll dodge now you cannot let them finish the roll dodge this is a little bug that zoss has not patched yet if you catch them literally right in the middle of the roll dodge before they finish the animation and fossilize them and then get a light attack off that off balance status effect is stuck on them so you're just going to to be able to infinitely power lash them until that status effect falls off. So it's actually really, really strong. Now, um, this is our flex spot. You can either run race against time if you're more of a speedy boy. Um, this will also give you minor force, therefore increasing your critical damage by an additional 10%, which is really, really good. But um, I have found that whirling blades, uh, when it compares to do I want 10% more crit damage or do I want access to an AoE execute? Well, I'm going to go with the AoE execute because what will happen a lot of the times is you'll set up your burst, you know, leap whip, you know, whatever. You'll get someone down to like 10% and then they'll be able to roll dodge away and there's nothing you can really do about it, especially if you're snared by Sea Serpent's Coil. So, Rolling Blades is just a nice little finisher, a nice little, you know, cherry on top. And again, guys, everything's going to crit anyway. So, when this crits, it's going to hit for a lot, all right? And then our ultimate on our front bar is, of course, Ferocious Leap. Um, this is a, acts as a gap closer. It gives us a 30k shield, which is pretty uh, astronomical. Acts as a stun. It's pretty cheap. It's probably one of the best ultimates in the game and in terms of cost. Back bar, we're running Igneous Weapons. This is a set and forget buff. This gives you your major brutality and major sorcery. You're going to cast it and it's literally going to last way over a minute. So this helps with your sustain as well. So you're not constantly having to cast Entropy or some other means to keep your major brutality up. Coagulating blood is going to be your oh shit button. Try not to spam this unless you absolutely have to. Another trick with um, Coag that I, I see a lot of DKs not using because when you use Corrosive, it is very telegraphed. What you can do, so you pop Corrosive, right? That, that's pretty noticeable. If you pop Coag, well, it, uh, it kind of hides that. So unless your opponent is really, really listening for the audio cue for this, they're not going to know you're in Corrosive and that burst comes out freaking nowhere we hit people with 13 15k whips into a 8 to 10k spin to win like people just do not expect the dragonite to be able to output that much damage still yet this patch but anyway resolving vigor this is uh this did get nerfed like 10 percent yeah yeah it is what it is gives you your, your minor resolve uh, increasing your physical and spell resistances by uh, 3,000. Also has a pretty nice healing over time effect. Volta Armor is your your uh, your buff. Um, the change to this was really good last patch. Um, they made this to where it does flame damage now, and this actually procs the burning stats effect uh, quite frequently. It's very, very low where it is an AoE flame ability, I think. I ran the numbers, it's like 2-3% to 3 chance to proc the burning stats effect, but it's really nice. When you're not really doing anything and people are just hitting you and you're just you know proccing the burning status effect which gives you your resources back due to your combustion passive so that's really nice and i'm running cinder storm now this is also a flex spot but the reason i like cinder storm is for one if you run enough cost reduction this becomes free to cast second of all um it is a nice snare 70 percent you know who cares you know snare and cereal it does a nice healing over time but what i mostly use this for is resource regeneration uh, when your stamina pool because we have the helping hands passive you see my stamina bar going up really quick there um, Even though this cost is literally nothing to cast and um, this is going to give us a thousand stamina back every single time we cast it so uh, You know abuse it while you can is it an exploit? Uh, I just think it It's not an exploit. It's knowing your class and knowing the limitations You know truly mastering a class like learning all the niche mechanics and uh, just uh, just a tip for you guys and the last but not least corrosive armor uh, you're gonna pop it. You're gonna do a lot of damage for 12 seconds. Um, there is not much more to note than that. Um, I'm going to show you the combo though um, that you guys definitely want to do and you want to practice. Now there is an add-on. I think it's called Acuity Timer, uh, something of that nature that actually does track your Acuity stacks. I have a makeshift counter of mine. You'll notice right below my character model is going to be where Acuity procs, right? And it pops up and yada yada. So uh, a rule of thumb, what you want to do is a win acuity prox you'll want to go ahead and pop your corrosive you know whatever be sure you are on your front bar doing some damage because what will happen is if acuity prox and you're on your back bar 
uh, for any length of time, um, you have to be on your front bar doing damage. It doesn't matter if it's dots, you know, whatever. So that's why I always say pop corrosive first, swap to your front bar to where you're able to actually stay on your front bar to build up those stacks. Now, once you acuity does proc, you need to do a little counter in your head if you're not doing an add-on timer for this, okay? Count to five. And by the time you count to five, you know, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. By the time you count to five, you should be at around a 100% crit chance, and that's when you want time your burst, okay? Uh, that's just a rule of thumb that I found out to be very beneficial to me. Again, an add-on timer would actually probably be a lot better, but uh, I'm lazy like that. Okay, so let's talk about some of the slottables I actually use on this. Um, if you're pretty broke, you don't have a lot of, you know, gold, can't go around, you know, most people don't play this, you know, 12 hours a day, you know, in farm mats, you know, whatever. Um, if you run tri stat potion, that's perfectly fine. Um, but if you do have a little bit of gold to toss around or you have access to a lot of Dragon's Blood, Dragon's Rum, and Combine, I would highly suggest you make these potions here, these Essence of Magicka which actually acts as a tri potion, but instead of giving you health, it gives you minor heroism for the entire duration of the potion. Um, this is very, very strong, especially on the Dragonite, as you can imagine, where ultimate regeneration is going to feed into your sustain as well as your damage. Now, if you want to free up a slot um, on your on your bar, you could run Alliance Spell Drop Potions. This, well, excuse me, you'll want to run the, uh, the Alliance Battle Drop Potions. This will give you your major brutality okay and that will actually free up a slot here on your back bar if you want to put uh i don't know insert a random skill here you know kind of suit your play style um that's just some some suggestions there and if you are really really struggling with sustain you can run smoke bear haunch instead of uh, bewitch sugar skulls um that's entirely up to you i don't have any bear haunch on me at the moment but it is a little pricey and uh i just think bewitch sugar skulls is just the best all-around food in my opinion Okay, so when it comes to champion points, you're want to running Fighting Finesse, Master at Arms, Deadly Aim, and Ironclad. Now you can change this up a little bit if you want to sacrifice a little bit of damage, such as a Master at Arms or Deadly Aim. You can put that into a little bit more healing over here near your healing tree, you know, Focus Mending. You can do that because that's going to buff your uh, Vigor as well as your Coag. And if you want a little bit more mitigation, you can come down here to Duels your buff and slot that instead. Now, when it comes to Red Tree, I always rock these four when your solo 1vx is going to be Relentlessness, Sustained by Suffering, Pain's Refuge, and then last but not least, the Survival Instincts. And when it comes to the Green Tree, this is mostly just quality of life stuff, but the one passive I would suggest is Liquid Efficiency, because if you do run the Heroism Potions, these are really, really expensive, so if you have a 10% chance to get some of these back, that's really going to save you a lot of money down the road. All right, well, that about does it for the video, guys. If you found any information in this video at all, I would really appreciate a like and sub. And if you have any questions about the build, please leave it down in the comments below where hit me up on the Discord. As soon as I get some time, I will get to back to you guys as soon as I freaking can. And if you guys want some one-on-one -on -one PvP coaching or you just want to get a little bit better at PvP or you have some questions in general, some behind-the-scenes builds that I've been working on, some a lot of the stuff that I run off-stream, a lot of things I've been theory crafting, or maybe if you need help theory crafting, build yourself. I also do have a Patreon. I also do have uh, YouTube memberships that have all the benefits and all that stuff listed. If you are interested in getting a little something for yourself while also supporting the channel, all that is available to you guys. So with all that being said, guys, have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.